Prudent Max Organic and Natural Toothpaste is a black owned company that believes in old fashioned values as our ancestors did. This product has no fluoride or chemicals. Prudent Max is great for whitening the teeth for children, adults, vegans, vegetarians, bleeding gums, canker sores, preventing plaque buildup, smokers, removing bad bacteria and alkalines in the mouth. It also is great for cleaning and restoring the gums. This product is available on Amazon and it has super high reviews. The link is at the top line of the description box. Go get yours right now. Actually, a couple current things going on right now. Yeah. Before oh, we get yeah. up right here, I don't know if you see what's going on with Diddy right now. Oof. What's your thoughts on that? that that's um, it's a lot, you know, because it seems like that's a tactic they use a lot, whether it's true or not. Particularly black men in power. Kind of the same thing with Cosby a little bit, but I would like to get your thoughts on that. Bill Cosby, I said from day one, constitutionally, they don't have a case on him and any conviction they secure will be inappropriate and reversed. And that happened. You had a chicken shit motherfucker who was a trial judge whose bitch wife was withholding the pussy if he didn't go along with what she wanted because she was a feminist. And what wound up happening is he let a lot of shit go wrong in his courtroom, which was a disgrace professionally. And you see, the district attorney who was in power at the time says, we have no intent of prosecuting Mr. Cosby. Right. None at all. And we find that the complainant is not credible and the accusations are unsustainable. Mm -hmm. The civil judge who had a case said, okay, since there's no possibility of prosecution, you are now compelled to make these depositions. And ordinarily when there's a pending criminal case, Fifth Amendment says you have a right to remain silent. You cannot be compelled to be a witness against you yourself. Since there was no prosecution, he can be compelled in a civil case to provide evidence against himself if necessary. Well, the newly elected DA, some asshole, stupid motherfucking asshole, who broke his oath to uphold the Constitution and said, I'm not bound by that. I'm going to get him. So they used the deposition when he admitted to certain facts, but not the intent. In other words, yeah, I gave a help of some drugs. She was trying to get high and get some BBD or BBC. Right. And she got what she wanted. But that's not, I forced it on her. She was knowing about it. He used that as part of his case in chief. And the asshole who was the trial judge delayed for six months what he was supposed to be turning out in no more than 60 days. So Cosby could spend more time in there. I talked to Dr. Cosby. Mm. And he said, they told him on the parole board, sent the word down, just go ahead and admit your guilt and we'll let you out in a week. He said, hell no, I didn't do shit. The alpha wanted her ass up in there to jumpstart a non-existent career. She wanted some BBC, sex, drugs, rock and roll, sex, drugs, movies, sex, drugs, basketball, baseball, football, sex, drug, golf, sex, drugs, uh, TV, and that's what she got. Now, that happens. I know about that. A whole lot of chicks tried to use the casting couch to jumpstart an unpromising career. Mm. Some of those folk that were on that, what was it? The women's magazine that had a whole bunch of the women to claim Cosby victimized them on the cover. Well, back in the 70s, I remember that I went to some of the Hollywood parties where they wanted some militants to come in to add flavor 
And we come there and they'd have all of the paraphernalia and the whiskey, the wine, the beer, and the VIPs. And you'd have a chick walk in there, take off her trench coat. He's told see through, no bra, no pockets. 15 minutes later, she's topless. 30 minutes later, she's bottomless. Hour later, no panties. She got a belt on. That's all she's wearing. And over the next couple of hours, you run into her, you know, like, come on, hurry up, man. Hurry up with the bathroom. Do what you going to do. And then she run out naked, wiping her mouth where she's mm. gone down on somebody and didn't completely swallow. And then you run into her laying up on your coat on the bed in the bedroom where everybody had their coats parked, screwing somebody. And then two days later on Sunday, you see her at another party and she's sitting up there doing the same thing. And now she's complaining about she got used and abused. No, fool, it's called regret. You just effed up. You tried to jump start a career. It was no more promising than how you screwed. So it is what you is. It is what it is. And you had Glory already and her daughter trying to convince you after your failed career that it wasn't your fault. It was these evil men. Mm. Okay, well, he got to quit. All right. There's some other stuff that goes on that you're seeing right now where we want to deal with mob justice mm. and that comes from inquiring minds want to know well goddamn the inquiring minds what did they say in star wars loop patience is a great virtue you know be patient right but what's the matter with you ain't you got a life you ain't getting laid, man. You ain't had no looky, nooky. You know, uh, get yourself some. Find out what that's about. You uh, get laid if you're a woman. Just get you some dick. God damn it. Then you might not be so worried about what some little soap opera bullshit is going on in the real world. Be patient. Let it develop. So we like to try cases in the media, which I don't approve of because I know that over the half century I did this nine times, well, 98 times out of 100, the media didn't know half as shit what they were talking about. And I used to have to work on not laughing out loud when I'm looking in my courtroom and all the media's out there poised with their pens to write down this horrible thing when the jury comes back with a question. I know what the question is because I'm looking at it. So I go through the formalities of asking each jury is this their question and blah, blah, blah. And I said, the court will now publish the question from the jury. Your Honor, if we feel that the victim deserved killing, do we have to convict the defendant? And the press goes, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make much of a story. Yeah, the fool that got blown away was an asshole. You know, technically it's against the law, but 12 folk up there don't like it. And there is this disconnect from reality. See, court TV drove soap operas out of business, but now court TV is switched over into being soap opera, and a lot of it's bullshit because they want pretty, and they want somebody youthful who's been out of law school not even 10 years. They don't even know how to wipe their ass without getting shit on their fingers. And <laughs> they don't have bills. They're not learned and experienced in the practice of law, nor wise in the ways of the world. And they have to take breaks so that 
a staff can advise them on what to do. And they like that, but we drove this bullshit soap opera thing out of business, which is good. And America before that used to have as its main entertainment what happened in its courtrooms. Uh, for hundred, several hundred years, the world said America doesn't go to the opera, the ballet, the play, or the concert. It goes to watch what goes on in its courtrooms where there's high drama, oratory, suspense, mm -hmm. and it was entertaining. And we learned about our system. Stuff happens now. Well, that's because you went to law school. Man, I didn't learn that in law school. I learned that shit in the fifth grade, man. What's wrong with you? You thought it's all of a bitch. What happened to you? Do you think in this situation, Diddy's going to find himself in a legal, a criminal case? Being I don't know. I haven't been paying that much attention to it. You know why? Tell us, please. Business. I did this for 50 years every goddamn day, and I'm tired of that shit. Let somebody else do that fucking work. When it's over, I'll take a look at it and assess it if it's meritorious and it made or did not make some law. Mayor race. You had the mayor race back in October. Paul Young ended up winning the mayor of Memphis. Is talk about. No um, punk. He has no connection with the neighborhood. He's in his mid 30s. He couldn't walk out in the neighborhood without his ass getting kicked. So it is what it is. He's in the back pockets of the current mayor who employed him for six years, then got him a job uh, to distribute uh, money illegally under the table, allegedly. And it is what it is. And Memphis has once again been sing out on this opportunity to be one of the biggest cities in America, one of the greatest. And some people have gotten that little chump change under the table. So it is going to work itself out. Meanwhile, I'm still dealing with the people out in the streets trying to bring safety to them. But that's got nothing to do with anything else. But yeah, that punk move that went on within the city. Uh, two of the major mainstream television stations were putting somebody else's picture up there as me. And there is this guy who's quite ill, and he's a personal friend, so I won't badmouth him. Yeah. He hold, held a position as a city councilman, so they were putting his picture up. Uh, is me, even though he has the same name. It's quite common, Joe Brown, you know, Joe Blow, you know, G.I. Joe and all that other stuff. But, you know, be careful what you ask for. You just might. What kind of rating are we? Rx or what here? You do your thing, Judge. Uncensored. We, be careful what the fuck you ask for. You just might get it. So talk about, obviously, there's some corruption going on. How long has it been going on? Yeah, Memphis yeah. is probably the most corrupt large city in the United States. Mm. Heard that. The gangsters out in the streets, they say, hey, we're tired of the killing, but what can we do? There's no power structure, police, city hall, anything in here. Everything's just do what you can, steal what you can. And if the people at the top are doing it, people at the bottom will do it too. So the youngsters are going out killing folk and we just became the murder capital of the United States where our total homicide rate so far this year is about equal to the combined homicide uh, totals for LA yeah. and New York. Wow. So it's bad. It's a lot of killing going on because there's hopelessness out there. And now we have a leftist district attorney who needed to replace the corrupt idiot on the right, a woman who was held to be probably America's most corrupt district attorney. And he fired a lot of the staff and he's off into this 
defund police bit. So somebody I know, president of a local black HBCU, a black university, got held up at gunpoint, armed robbery, and his car hijacked uh, a Porsche. Mm. And they caught the juvenile in the vehicle. They have a brief chase to, they have on record. They got him, they caught him, booked him, and then were directed to let him go without having to post bond. So, wow. There are allegations, but that's not how it works in real life. So, you know, that's what you get. The criminal court judges are complaining that the DA's office fired so many people that knew how to little bit try a case. Right now they can't do any trial work. The criminal court's been jacked around for a year because of that as a result of the personnel changes which were needed, but the selections for the replacement. They didn't have it up here about how to do these cases. So now the other side is blaming the judges and everybody's going at everybody's throat. Nobody's getting a goddamn thing done except bullshit. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Let's yeah. Specific question, you know. Yeah, thank you, thank you for sharing. Bullshit and all this other kind of shit all day long. Yeah. Right. Now we definitely been following you at the mayor race, so definitely wanted to bring that up. And <laughs> Too late now. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it because now I don't have to be nice to anybody. Heard that. Right. Talk about um your time, you know, serving as a judge. I heard that you took the recidivism rate from um 80% to 18. Yeah, I now, did. Obviously, the man for the yeah. job or something like that for that city. So Early talk today, about I that. Met up with, I met up with some people for lunch. About five or six folks walked by, Judge. I want to thank you for what you did. What did I do? Man, you made you showed me how to be a man and like that was it man once i figured out hey this is what you got to do to be a man ain't no more of that other bullshit going down i'm turned around man i'm back on track see what we have is too little manhood down in the hood we got a lot of bitches out there mm -hmm. that got dick still swinging they don't know how to be men. See, if you're a real man, you're about protecting and providing. You're about promoting manhood so they can come in and help you protect womanhood and childhood. When you're doing this other shit, like we got these fantasies about, hey, man, it's all about pimping, man. No, fuck, pimps are the lowest bitches on the planet. Mm. Used to be in the penitentiary, they suck more dick than anybody else and got more <laughs> butt fucked than anybody except child molesters mm. that's reality yeah but people don't want to hear that see i grew up in south central la i'm not supposed to be where i am right now mm. I so that. i bring that like hey i ain't trying to get down on you i'm just trying to tell you like you want to do something about changing your situation you got to stop worrying about who's fucking you over. Everything on the goddamn planet is trying to fuck you over. So that's adversity, whether it had saber teeth and it was a tiger, you know, or whether it's a lion or something like that in East Africa, it's adversity. It's your job as a man to overcome that adversity. So when you would come overcome that adversity, you kick ass. One way or the other, if you aren't physically able to do it, you can smarten up to do it, or you can add your self to the numbers of people that do it. So kick ass, conquer adversity. It's a challenge. And when you whip it, then you have something to brag about. And when you old man like me, you hang around talking to your own boys in the driveway, drinking a beer, you can start talking shit about what you did. Mm -hmm. right. a, so it becomes a real thing that's how manhood works so don't whine just look at it as a challenge to overcome do you feel like when, he, when these brothers go in and out of prison 
and they get that free labor or exploitable labor. Do you feel like that's what the system wants? No, that's not what it's about. It's not free labor. They put people to work to keep them out of mischief. Idle minds mischief make. Okay. Old proverb and it's reality. Even in the military, you have to find something for the lower ranks to do because they get into mischief if they are unoccupied. What the penitentiary, the whole penal, the whole criminal justice system is about is not about reducing crime. Mm. It's about accommodating surplus labor. See, labor is a commodity like wheat, corn, cotton, beef, pork, poultry. Yeah. And when you have a glut, the price drops. Since you're talking about labor units and the price dropping for wages, what you wind up with is Timothy McVeigh types who get pissed off and they got balls. And they go get ammonium nitrate, America's most common fertilizer that you can buy at any home and garden place. No ID required. And if you don't already know how, you can go online and readily find out how to make a very effective long pulse high explosive that the military uses to stuff their 155 millimeter howitzer shells with. And you can blow up a courthouse in Oklahoma City and kill 240 some people. They don't want that. So just like you do with any kind of commodity glut, there are three things. Cut back production of the commodity, subsidize the producer, and you store the surplus. We store our surplus labor in jail cells and penitentiary cells instead of grain silos. The welfare check is the subsidy mm. for not producing and cutting back a production is the dumb shit we listen to where we bang out, drug out, drop out, have wrong ideas of what's going on we develop wrong lifestyles, wrong way of presenting ourselves, have wrong ideation, make where we live islands of chaos so that those places cannot engage in cohesive political activity to better, uh, better self and circumstance. And we keep fucking up until we wind up getting that felony and we get put in and then it becomes very difficult to be employed so they have controlled the surplus labor. Meanwhile, there is a huge, huge economic opportunity to provide food, service, clothing, shelter, transportation, communications, and supervision of those that are in the people warehouses. So, you see, there's no rehabilitation because when you rehab from this perspective, you just make the situation worse. You've got a glutted labor market. And if you don't take the people out of the labor market who already glutted, then you wind up with a big problem. You make it worse. And there's a Timothy Mouvet out there waiting to develop and saying, oh, hey, we, we're going to go down on this one. Now, the point is, is that the United States of America has been caught up with its own methodology and it is the only industrialized nation that does not have a cohesive governmental plan to keep the worker who's in danger of obsolescence from being made into a productive somebody who earns the same income. You see, right now, what we have is somebody has been working for a company for 19 years. Mm -hmm. He's trying to train his nephew on being a forklift driver for this company. But he just got a pink slip that says, bye, sucker. Thank you for your loyal service for 19 years. Fuck you. Uh, we've got three or four corporate execs that want to be billionaires before they get to the end of their 50s. So you go 
whatever the hell happens to you, we don't give a damn. But thank you for your labor. So bye-bye. Now, I remember I went in the 80s as part of a legal crew to Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And we visited this large plant. It had 4,500 some workers in three shifts, 1,500 a shift, three shifts a day, eight hours a day. And uh, it was a huge place. Well, I went back in the early 90s and instead of 1,500 per shift, 4,500 total, they had a net total of 380 some employees and that was security maintenance and some folk that were in lab coats that were on the top in the penthouse area where they operated the computers for this fully automated factory that now 380 people had replaced 4,500 people. So fuck you, the rest of you, you're on your own. We don't give a goddamn government doesn't give a goddamn get your ass pissed off when we find something that you can displace your anger on meanwhile all the rest of you that got displaced if you can't come up with a hustle on your own we will house you in a warehouse aka penitentiary and fuck you and your kids your mama your daddy grandparents your spouse too so it's, it's what is done, and that's why we have this problem. The pipeline between schoolhouse and jailhouse is real, but not for the reasons most people think. The use of prison labor is not to gain profit, it's just to keep the labor out of mischief. If they're tired and they're working, they get commissary or something they can put toward commissary, then they behave. Meanwhile, you don't teach them how to get them, get it together because you don't want them to get it together. And if they get it together, as far as you're concerned, it's worse. That's a real life myth. Anyway. Deep. Very deep. I want to transition almost because you, you said pipeline and that brings me to my next question. And that what it seems to be a uh, hip hop to prison, death, early pregnancy, a disease pipeline that we seem to see now in our current stage of hip hop. This time last year, we were speaking on Kanye West and the effect that Kanye West had speaking on the Jewish community, speaking on wealth, speaking on power. Fast forward a year and we see hip hop almost at its lowest point. When you, when you look at the content, when you look at the imagery in female hip hop, in drill rap and male hip hop, what is your overall thoughts on the current stage of hip hop and its effect on our community in particular. Go back 55 years. That's before most of well, it, before you guys were born. Yes, sir. See, what happened is Hollywood was going broke. They came up with this thing called Color TV. So the major motion picture, picture industry was going broke every Thursday and every Sunday you had two new movies three or four cartoons nobody gave a damn about how well people liked the movie every Thursday and Sunday they changed well, color television was keeping a lot of people at home by then. It had become affordable in the late 60s. And they couldn't sustain that. Just think about it. Each studio was having to come up with a couple of hundred movies a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what they did is they started hiring young people fresh out of college. And they had the idea look, we got a bright idea, a thought. There's this huge market of colored folk, black folk, Negroes, Afro-Americans, 
and they want to see themselves. Let's go to them and we can save our industry. Wow. And instead of two new movies every Thursday and Sunday, we just have one and it'll last, stay in the theaters as long as people will go. And instead of 50 cents for an adult admission, and you walk in anytime you wanted to, in the middle of a movie, saw what was going on, watched the sub features and the two or three or four cartoons, and then the second feature, and then you sit through the part of the feature that you missed, I'll oh, stay all night. So they said, let's go to these Negroes. They want to see themselves. They're starving for a view of Negro, Afro-American, Black, whatever on the screen. And since we want to bring in the largest number, let's not talk about those Afro-Americans. We didn't say African-Americans and Afro-Americans, Black folk then. Not the ones that are trying to be about something. Let's pick, pick the pimps, hoes, drug dealers, robbers, thieves, murderers, drug mm. dealers, etc. So we can appeal to the lowest common denominator and bring in the most amount of money. They started off with Black Caesar, starting Fred the Hammer Williams who was playing the part of uh, an assassin, a uh, drug kingpin, who rides off into the sunrise smoking a big cigar. 18 months later, 20 months later, they followed up with Superfly, Rod O'Neill, pimped out glorifying the sale of cocaine, which corresponded with the FBI making sure that cocaine got into the black community. And we started glorifying dysfunction. The pimp, the whole, the drug dealer, the et cetera, the fucked up folk became the things to emulate. And they made them exemplars of what you ought to be. I remember when Superfly came out. 1971 in L.A. and I remember I was doing an intern thing in 1972 in Washington, D.C. Me and my roommate I'd gone to high school with, we drove around a theater that used to be on 14th and U, near 14th and U. And there was a line coming out of the theater. It went to the end of the short end of the block, down to the long side, down the long side, down the other short side, back up the long side, and then short side back into the theater. And people were standing out there for two or three hours to watch Superfly, which was a poisonous piece of bullshit. People had been wearing subdued dashikis, wearing Afro jeans and combat boots and fatigue jackets ready for the revolution. Mm -hmm. Then they started wearing platforms and mm -hmm. bullshit pressed hair again, looking like something out of the early modern history museum wing of the Smithsonian Institution from 1950 something. And as Malcolm said, a processed head equals a processed mind, but they were sure doing it. Everything was pimped out, pimp your ride, pimp your persona, you know, bullshit. It was dysfunctional. You got Pam Greer, she was beautiful, man. She was fine back then. But she started switching from playing these roles where her brother got murdered by the drug dealers, so she wanted revenge on the drug dealers. And if you saw the unedited versions, 
she got knocked down, knocked out five or six, seven, eight times per movie, and her pussy and tits would all show. Mm. And there would be four or five naked white women that somehow or another managed to get integrated into the scene. So they walked out half well naked, getting out the shower. And then it became from the brother got killed to the brother was a rival drug lord. So the woman wanted to take over from her brother as a drug queen. And then it got worse from there. So over 55 years you got this pimped out mentality where the black folk became bitches to be put out on the street to be fucked by tricks hmm. and paid for it and nowadays hip-hop is only the tip of the iceberg reflecting the sick reality behind what they've done instead of glorifying manhood you glorify pimp hood bullshit and other stuff and nowadays we got it so uh it is unfashionable to deal with those who want to be counterfeit something else now for most of my legal career over a half century Counterfeiting was a crime. Now the government sponsors and approves counterfeiting when it comes to humans. Mm -hmm. Whether you or a boy counterfeiting is a girl or, you know, something else counterfeiting is something else or an alien snuck across the border trying to counterfeit as somebody who is a, a native born or naturalized citizen it doesn't make any difference it's okay let's go deal with the bullshit and we sit here and we go oh man well and what is it with hip-hop well hip-hop hip-hop's embarrassing to me yeah let me tell you why it's a stagnant music form when I grew up, I listened to what my old folks listened to, and I knew that what they listened to and danced to, my grandparents couldn't handle. And I know what I listened to. My parents, let alone grandparents, couldn't listen to and couldn't handle. Hip-hop's been in place for 45, 40, well, 40 years. So you have grandparents, parents, parents, or maybe even great grandparents in there in a club dancing to listening to the same music. This doesn't fit stagnant. A certain ethnic group has been making a lot of money by pushing something. And the general theory, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And since it sells a lot, what you get is, let's keep up with hip hop that is 40 some years old. And let's not go into new music. Let's talk about gangster thug rap. But, you know, that's been going on for a long time. I remember years and years ago, going on 50 years ago, I went to a thing in Manhattan. Mm -hmm that came up well no not manhattan harlem mm -hmm. and they had a dj review and what the style was is that the djs would put on these block parties and they would talk shit and they do the rap you know as they're spinning the records and they start scratching them you know and all of the rest of it and go yeah man it's down you know this is hip hop Robert on come into town, man. You know, it's all about the flow. You know, it ain't about the common Joe. It's all about the thing you got to deal with. You know, you got to be with the man on the wing. You know, you got to fly, you got to try. Yeah, and then they would have competitions. And that's when your rap started. And then later you got that ego rap that started up in the late 1970s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been too long for a music genre 
to stay where it is, but for the fact that the Western world has been trying to destroy masculinity. So you have a group of young males who want to be men all over the planet, and they look at gangster hip hop rap video, and everybody's down with the half naked babes, and it looks like men are in charge, but it's not really that. What's going on is the females you see half naked, that's their great grandmamas, their grandmamas, their mamas, mm. their favorite aunts and friend girls are the same playing bitch, hanging outside of the back stoop in the projects, half naked trying to get fucked so they get knocked up and get a bigger check. It's Ooh. sickness. Mm. And when I look at a gangster rap video, I don't see a bunch of men. I see a bunch of bitches that are trying to emulate their favorite arts with something in their psyches that got put there when they were eight years old and their favorite 13 year old op was talking about getting over. It's really kind of sick when you know what you're looking at. It's kind of like germs. Floor around here is wax. Right. Got a housekeeper. She makes sure it stays waxed and clean. You drop something 50, well, 500 years ago, 400 years ago on that floor looks like this. People pick it right up and eat it. Right. But you see, I know that that means there are germs down there. And you get your ass sick. You pick that shit up and eat it off the floor. But you see, now that I know what I know, when I look at some of the stuff that everybody's talking about, yeah, my is down, do you know DJ so and so and so and so and bullshit, bullshit motherfucker. He's sitting up there acting like a bitch. He's <laughs> modeling himself on his goddamn whole aunt who was 13 with two children. Mm. Damn. Now, you think I'm lying about that? 1994 in my courtroom. I had a 57 year old woman, female. She was her mama's second oldest child. She was born when her mama was 14. Wow. But the 57 year old was in my courtroom. Also in my courtroom was her 43 year old daughter who huh. was her second child Damn. born when she was 14. Yeah. The 43 year old daughter, get this, had a 34 year old daughter in my courtroom born when she was one week shy of her 10th birthday. Wow. What in the world? Oh. The 34 year old daughter in my courtroom had a 21 year old daughter in my courtroom born when she was 13 to 20 year old, 21 year old in my courtroom had an 11 year old girl pregnant with her second child. No way. Now, 16 months later, the 57 year old fucked up and was back in front of me on a probation violation. She was now 59. The 21 year old was now 23 and her 10 year old daughter was now 13 with three children. What? So I was making the now 59 year old come back every two weeks so I could eyeball a ball of defective ass. And one week she came in and she had 342 lineal descendants. Just two weeks later, she had 358. This was in 1996. Now in 2000, the year I retired from doing the criminal court stuff, which was two years after that TV program started, I had a lot of leave. I'd accumulated. This woman had 3,400 lineal descendants and 120 of them were in my courtroom alone. My 120 plus. Ooh. 
one of her 29 year old great 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 grandsons had guess how many children 63 what about 58 different baby mamas dang <gasps> Oof. Out of this 3,400, we found exactly two that had ever graduated from high school. Those two got essentially kidnapped by their fathers and taken to Chicago where they had a decent school system back then. And they were the only ones that we could find out of 3,400 plus we knew about who had had jobs. Now, you want to know what's funny? One of the guys that I'd gotten involved in the analysis was a PhD. And he used to work as an intern with this program where they take chimps and gorillas, female chimps and gorillas, raise them in human families and teach them sign language. And he had analyzed one of these idiots in my courtroom. Guy thought he was a gangster. Mm -hmm. I said, Doc, don't tell us yet, but are you familiar with Brother Davis? Uh, excuse me, Dr. Davis. Uh, yes, sir. What is that? What do we tease him about? Well, Your Honor, you're talking about the apes? Yes, sir. Well, he participated in these studies of these apes, chimps and gorillas who were taught American standard sign language. By the way, is that the same series of examinations that using English were given to the defendant in this cause sitting over here? Yes, sir. Said, oh my God, Judge, I just now put it together. I said, hold it a point. We talked about a few other things. He said, but judge, I just have to add this. It's maturation. The apes were immature. They very seldom got past 8.2 years in human maturity. I said, look at page 11. He said, well, the defendant's only 7.9 years in human maturity. He said, now you tell me what your conclusion is. He said, Your Honor, they got exhibits at the Memphis Zoo that are smarter than the defendant this year in the courtroom. God damn. I said, yeah. See, and when we last studied this woman, she had almost 96,000 lineal descendants, literally in West Tennessee, and she was still alive. Mm. And all of them were fuck-ups. But see, nobody talks about that. And as a race of people, if we're going to get anywhere, we have to do something about it. See, primary problem with us is gotten back to this thing about glorifying this function that I spoke mm. on earlier. Right. is you want to get rid of manhood. And for a long time in American history, the main way to get manhood out of the way is to have his mother teach him, the boy, he should not be a man and should be a good slave. Now, I know that because I spent many a long hour in D.C. working for this think tank, going over the microfilm recordations of what we call slave pamphlets. Man, eyes used to ache, back ache. You know, like, man, I want to go home, get get laid, man, get, get some <laughs> nookie, man, hey. It's bad, man. All these fine women that used to live in Chocolate City, D.C. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> for every goddamn brother, man. Goddamn. <laughs> ain't no more. It's Rainbow City now. It ain't Chocolate City. Mm. 
Ooh. Man. What, 55 years, 50 years ago? Man, it was some, ooh, man, you got to believe it. <laughs> and I'm sitting up in the library, I'm going, God damn, man, I'm looking through the readers and I'm going, man, damn. And see, I'm looking at what the slave masters were giving it each other as advice on how to raise slaves for fun and profit. Kind of like the modern day infomercial. Once I was broke, and, you know, down and out and borrowing money from relatives. Now I have a yacht and three, you know, Rolls Royce uh, vehicles and four homes and this, that and the other. Yeah, that's what they were talking about. Mm. And part of the process was getting the slave mother to raise her offspring as slaves. They equated the two situations. Well, not equated, but they said it's the same as raising horses. Now, I had a fine ass movie star quality looking ex wife. Took me for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. we were on. Right. And we had a ranch and we were raising horses. And I know a lot of what I was reading in those slave pamphlets about the equation between black folk and horses was right. true. You cannot take a wild herd stallion and domesticate it, but you can use it to breed. But you can take the chief mayor, female, horse, in the herd, and you can domesticate her. And if you domesticate her, she will domesticate, help you domesticate her foals, offspring, and other young horses. And I know this, when you were breeding horses, if you kept the foal with the mother, long enough she would quasi domesticate the horse if you got a foal that had been weaned from the mother too early you had a harder time to get the horse domesticated okay so they did that with black folk and over and over over a 150 year period i was reading stuff that said you must, under all circumstances, resist the temptation of attempting to interact with your slaves through your butler, through your huntsman, through your gun bearer, through your favorite carriage driver, even if you may have a friendly relationship with him. You must always interact with your slaves through either your overseer or senior female slaves. Never wow. go through the mail. Wow. Never. And there really was William Lynch and his secret. I think the first pamphlet of his I read was dated 1706 was that the Negro is like the horse. They do things similarly and what works for horse breeding works for Negro breeding. And if you want to domesticate your Negroes, do the same thing that you want to do when you want to domesticate a breeding stock of horses, you go through the female. So black men have a uh, legacy of not protecting the black race and black women have a legacy of facilitating the enslavement of the black race. And you can see that with the Democratic Party continuously pushing black female for this position, black female for that position, black female for the administrator here black female for the nominal head of this bureaucracy over there. Absolutely. Wow. So you have to have a cooperation and it's always been my theory. And I gotten some hot water with some idiots behind this 
that said, you do not need to have a black woman as the first black person on a dollar bill or some denotation of currency. You need a black man. And interestingly enough, the same year they wanted to jump me for that, I got Man of the Year Award from the Harriet Tubman Foundation <laughs> because she said in her own writings, if in the future, by some quirk, America decides to honor somebody black, colored, she said, by putting their picture on a bill of currency, it needs to be my hero, Frederick Douglass. Mm, for sure. Her hero, Frederick Douglass. And my grandfather, who was born in 1850, yeah, he was dark as you can get because his father was straight out of Nigeria. A Yoruba district sub chieftain kidnapped by those asses down there uh, in Dahomey that they glorified in the woman king, which was the worst piece of propagandistic bullshit I've seen in a long time. <clears throat> um, he knew Frederick Douglass, was a great admirer of his. And he also, by the way, knew Harriet Tubman too. Wow. So my grandfather was an interesting character. He and an uncle had to flee a certain Southern state because they murdered two deputy sheriffs who they felt had participated in the lynching of another uncle of mine. Mm -hmm. Really stuff. So, you know. He became a doctor, and he and Alex Haley's grandfather practiced medicine in Jackson, Tennessee, for years as partners. Now, see, there is a difference. Right now, we think of black professionals as nerds, right? Irrelevant yep. punk asses who run <laughs> from everything. Right. 55 years ago, if you were supposed to be a down brother, you went to college. You had an education. My grandfather, remember, murdered two deputy sheriffs back in the 19th century. Didn't he behead him or something like that? Did he behead him? That or? was another grandfather. Right. Okay. How did he get Man. <laughs> okay. He got the motherfucker's head off. <laughs> 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 he went. Canada. So family tradition. Right. It's like fuck this shit. I don't play that. You know, but <laughs> some people don't want to say, oh yeah, you're a coon because you do. No, motherfucker, that's called diplomacy, asshole. Yeah. It's like, you know, you gotta get allies. You wanna see what diplomacy is about? Look at a picture from World War II. You got Joe Stalin, the badass motherfucker sitting up there. <laughs> You got Winston Churchill, the drunk, goddamn elitist son of a bitch <laughs> from the pitage of England. And you've got <laughs> FDR sitting up there crippled, can't even hardly walk, and all of them allies, and they, to some extent, hated each other. Right. But they wanted to get to Benito, Adolf, and Tojo, and they kicked the ass real good. After that, they all fell out, but it's diplomacy. So I look at folk right now and I say, hey, man, there's an objective. And remember this old proverb, the enemy of my enemy is at least right now my friend. Absolutely. Um, definitely. One. Right. Truth has no face, but truth itself two mm. right. and three wisdom is wisdom irrespective of where it comes from that's three and you forget that you fucked up anyway <laughs> man i ain't listening to it called wait a minute there's just something uh you know my favorite one some bullshit i don't want to step on anybody's 
feet, but hell, I'll stomp on them because <laughs> a lot of times people don't realize what they're saying. Man, the Constitution is racist, man. They need to be get rid of, man. Okay, what do you suggest as a replacement? Mm. Yeah, man, well, it's racist, man. Black folk was considered three-fifths of a person. They never said that in the Constitution. Yes, they did. Where? Mm. What are you talking about? Article 1, where it says, for purposes of a securing an apportionment of representation in the House of Representatives, three-fifths of all those persons held in involuntary servitude or slavery shall be counted toward that number. And you ever heard, Google it, go to Wikipedia, look up Samuel Hinckley, late of Cape Cod. That motherfucker was one of those three-fifths people, but seven of his descendants were U.S. presidents, including Barack Obama, George Herbert Walker Bush, and George Walker Bush, and one of his descendants was the U.S. vice president, that's Dick Cheney. They never, by the way, the Constitution never once mentions race. Not mm. one time. Whew. And I'll say this, which is interesting. For the last 50 some years, ABA, NBA, National Bar Association, American Bar Association, American Trial Lawyers Association, surveys are done and less than 25 percent of the judges and lawyers have actually read the entire constitution wow we study some aspects of it but we haven't read it and less than five percent of the people who represent the people of the country and of the states and of the municipalities and counties have ever read the Constitution that they've sworn to uphold. So it's really kind of messed up. But anyway, she, the analogy to that, by the way, is if you can draft up and propose a better replacement, give it to me. I'll read yeah. it. But let's give a parallel. The NBA, National Basketball Association. Now, we watch basketball, don't we? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. One time, the NBA was probably one of the most racist institutions in the United States of America. 1946, mm -hmm. the Lakers, when they were in Minnesota, hired Don Barksdale. Don Barksdale had never played basketball. He played football as a wide receiver for UCLA, and he ran track, the high hurdles in the 440. But he was a great athlete, so the Lakers hired him. That was the first black man in the NBA. Now, when you think of basketball, LeBron and Kobe and Shaq and yeah. Magic and all the rest, you think somebody black, don't you? Yeah, dominated. So, yep. Yeah, but do you want to throw the rule book for the NBA out the window because when it was fundamentally created, it was created by one of the most racist institutions in America? Mm. Right. The Constitution was created by a very racist institution, but it doesn't check that box of it's not why probably the best anybody's come up with in the world and world history when it comes to governance. So I always say, okay, let's replace it. What the fuck do you want? Give it to me. Let me see. I want to read it. There you go. I want to, I want to, I want to uh, ask you a couple current things going on right now. Yeah. Before go we get ahead. up out here. I don't know if you see what's going on with Diddy right now. Oof. What's your thoughts on that? that that's um, it's a lot. You know, because it seems like that's a tactic they use a lot, whether it's true or not, particularly black men in power. Kind of the same thing with Cosby a little bit. But I would like to get your thoughts on that. Bill Cosby, I said from day one, constitutionally, they don't have a case on him. And any conviction they secure will be inappropriate and reversed. 
And that happened. You had a chicken shit motherfucker who was the trial judge whose bitch wife was withholding the pussy if he didn't go along with what she wanted because she was a feminist. And what wound up happening is he let a lot of shit go wrong in his courtroom, which was a disgrace professionally. And you see, the district attorney who was in power at the time says, we have no intent of prosecuting Mr. Cosby. Right. None at all. And we find that the complainant is not credible and the accusations are unsustainable. Mm -hmm. The civil judge who had a case said, okay, since there's no possibility of prosecution, you are now compelled to make these depositions. And ordinarily when there's a pending criminal case, Fifth Amendment says you have a right to remain silent. You cannot be compelled to be a witness against you yourself. Since there was no prosecution, he can be compelled in a civil case to provide evidence against himself if necessary. Well, the newly elected DA, some asshole, stupid motherfucking asshole, who broke his oath to uphold the Constitution and said, I'm not bound by that. I'm going to get him. So they used the deposition when he admitted to certain facts, but not the intent. In other words, yeah, I gave a help of some drugs. She was trying to get high and get some BBD or BBC. Right. And she got what she wanted. But that's not, I forced it on her. She was knowing about it. He used that as part of his case in chief. And the asshole who was the trial judge delayed for six months what he was supposed to be turning out in no more than 60 days. So Cosby could spend more time in there. I talked to Dr. Cosby. Mm. And he said, they told him on the parole board, sent the word down, just go ahead and admit your guilt and we'll let you out in a week. He said, hell no, I didn't do shit. The alpha wanted her ass up in there to jumpstart a non-existent career. She wanted some BBC, sex, drugs, rock and roll, sex, drugs, movies, sex, drugs, basketball, baseball, football, sex, drugs, golf, sex, drugs, uh, TV, and that's what she got. Now, that happens. I know about that. A whole lot of chicks tried to use the casting couch to jumpstart an unpromising career. Mm. Some of those folk that were on that, what was it? The women's magazine that had a whole bunch of the women that claim Cosby victimized them on the cover. Well, back in the 70s, I remember that I went to some of the Hollywood parties where they wanted some militants to come in to add flavor. And we'd come there and they'd have all of the paraphernalia and the whiskey, the wine, the beer, and the VIPs, and you'd have a chick walk in there, take off her trench coat. He's told see-through, no bra, no pockets. 15 minutes later, she's topless. 30 minutes later, she's bottomless. Hour later, no panties. She got a belt on. That's all she's wearing. And over the next couple of hours, you run into her, you know, like, come on, hurry up, man. Hurry up with the bathroom. Do what you're going to do. And then she run out naked, wiping her mouth where she's mm. gone down on somebody and didn't completely swallow. And then you run into her laying up on your coat on the bed in the bedroom where everybody had their coats parked 
screwing somebody and then two days later on Sunday, you see her at another party and she's sitting up there doing the same thing. And now she's complaining about she got used and abused. No, fool, it's called regret. You just effed up. You tried to jumpstart a career. It was no more promising than how you screwed. So it is what you is. It is what it is. And you had Glory already and her daughter trying to convince you after your failed career that it wasn't your fault. It was these evil men. Okay, well, he got acquitted. All right, there's some other stuff that goes on that you're seeing right now where we want to deal with mob justice. Mm. And that comes from inquiring minds want to know. Well, goddamn the inquiring minds. What did they say in Star Wars? Look, patience is a great virtue. You know, be patient. Right. But what's the matter with you? Ain't you got a life? You ain't getting laid, man. You ain't had no looky, nooky. <laughs> you know, uh, get yourself some. Find out what that's about. You uh, get laid if you're a woman. Just get you some dick. God damn it. Then you might not be so worried about what some little soap opera bullshit is going on in the real world. Be patient, let it develop. So we like to try cases in the media, which I don't approve of because I know that over the half century I did this, nine times, well, 98 times out of 100, the media didn't know half as shit what they were talking about. And I used to have to work on not laughing out loud when I'm looking in my courtroom and all the media's out there poised with their pens to write down this horrible thing when the jury comes back with a question. I know what the question is because I'm looking at it. So I go through the formalities of asking each jury is this their question and blah, blah, blah. Then I said, the court will now publish the question from the jury. Your Honor, if we feel that the victim deserved killing, do we have to convict the defendant? And the press goes, huh. you know, it doesn't make much of a story. Yeah, the fool that got blown away was an asshole. You know, technically it's against the law, but the 12 folk up there don't like it. And there is this disconnect from reality. She court TV drove soap operas out of business, but now court TV is switched over into being soap opera and a lot of it's bullshit because they want pretty and they want somebody youthful who's been out of law school not even 10 years they don't even know how to wipe their ass without getting shit on their fingers and <laughs> they don't have bills they're not learned and experienced in the practice of law nor wise in the ways of the world and they have to take breaks so that a staff can advise them on what to do and they like that, but we drove this bullshit soap opera thing out of business, which is good. And America before that used to have as its main entertainment what happened in its courtrooms. Uh, for hundred, several hundred years, the world said America doesn't go to the opera, the ballet, the play, or the concert. It goes to watch what goes on in its courtrooms where there's high drama, oratory, suspense, mm -hmm. and it was entertaining. And we learned about our system. Stuff happens now. Well, that's because you went to law school. Man, I didn't learn that in law school. I learned that shit in the fifth grade, man. What's wrong with you? You thought it's all of a bitch. What happened to you? Do you think in this situation, Diddy's going to find himself in a legal, a criminal case? Being I don't know. 
I haven't been paying that much attention to it. You know why? Tell us, please. Business. I did this for 50 years. Every goddamn day, and I'm tired of that shit. Let somebody else do that fucking work. When it's over, I'll take a look at it and assess it if it's meritorious and it made or did not make some law. Now, I'm rem- oh, sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> that's it. I was, um, you were telling a story one time, uh, maybe from 97, 98. Where you were um in a uh maybe like a party, and a lady told you that a guy pretty much said that she would pay her uh two thousand dollars to say that. Oh, she, yeah. yeah. Uh, my the show uh, that started in September of nineteen ninety eight had been going for just a month and a half. This was uh, November, late October. Mm-hmm. 1998, I was a bachelor, man, I was throwing down all these fine, fine ladies right. in the soaps and movies and television, man. I'm dancing with these fine starlets, man. They was looking good, yeah. So I like to dance, still do occasionally. And I wound up hooking up with this sister uh, we were sitting at a table. She got up and excused herself to the ladies' room. Took a little bit of time to come back. And she got back. Said, "You know that tall dude over there in the gray suit?" I said, "Yeah." Said he's the CEO of the company that you know is doing this show. I had. said he walked up to me and offered me two thousand dollars in cash if I'd signed this bullshit note that you were trying to cop fields on me. Mm. What? So she and I went around and got written statements from most of the women I could remember I danced with that this dude had done the same thing. So we laid a trap for them. I hired this beautiful sister from out of Mississippi who had become a Miss Washington, D.C. Damn, she was fine too, man. That was one fine lady. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we set a trap. And she started feeding this false information to the wife of this person that was CEO of the company I was working for. And we started filing sworn affidavits of what we had done with human resources. And it was all in a lockbox that I had the only key to. So they hauled me in to accuse me of trying to proposition this fictitious woman that we had created. And they had a letter supposedly signed by this fictitious woman that I was doing something inappropriate. So I said, fuck you. I quit, son of a bitches. You full of shit. Meanwhile, before I physically kick your asses and you don't dare complain about it, so I will have a free opportunity to vent my frustration and aggression by putting my foot up your asses. No considering your persuasions, you might like this. I said, let's bring Department of Human Services over here for the studio, see what they've got. So when they brought it out, well, in six weeks, I was the only one left standing. So, and then the show went on for 14 more than 15 years or about 14, probably 13 and a half, if you take them. But anyway, and I quit because the son of a bitches, CBS, wanted me to take an IOU for tens of millions of dollars that they'd owned me, that they'd stolen. I had a lawyer. We'd never lost a case against them. We were doing fine. Something happened. He disappeared law firm wound up sending the checks back and he disappeared like he died family was asking me had i heard from him or seen him wow so shit happens 
think it's interesting. Hollywood is vicious, it's low down, it's petty, and it's populated by a bunch of folk who spent their entire adult lives in the make-believe. They have not dealt with the real world. They sit on their little soft asses on leather chairs and leather sofas in the bar areas of five-star hotels, and they drink shabli with their fingers stuck out. <laughs> Have you heard about this little incident going on? Oh, my God, Earl, it's awful. I heard it's really bad. Mary, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Schwartz, what do you think about this? Blah, 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 blah. And see, they're totally disconnected from the real world. And a lot of these folk you see in the movies, yeah, man, we're going to have to make a move. We got to deal with this issue, man. And when you run into them in reality, oh, my God, it was so fascinating. I almost creamed my pants when I <laughs> play this part oh my god it was so thrilling oh my god damn shit whoa dude damn i ain't never going to see no more of that bullshit <laughs> is what it is yes, sir. It is what it is, man. Definitely got Judge Joe Brown on the Hip Hop and Censor podcast, dropping jewels like only Judge Joe can. Man, we definitely appreciate your time. You got anything else, guys? Um, okay, yeah, we definitely way, appreciate your time. Comment, I gotta be fair to him. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yep. You've got a lot of people who have a great deal of creativity. Please put it to use and stop yeah. getting punked out and used to sell something that is being published throughout the free world to keep young males pacified so they don't get too goddamn pissed off about trying to be emasculated. Yeah. Yeah. What you see in hip hop gangster rap video is not masculine. Female. Mm. See, fundamentally, you go back to the ice ages. Men have been about the business of protecting and providing. Yes, sir. See, you know what our job is. A lot of people don't get it. And if you don't work on it, so you do. If you happen to be on board the next Titanic and that damn thing is sinking or the spaceship and it's about to go where it ain't supposed to go when you got to get off you're supposed to be able to say ma'am you and your child have my seat on the lifeboat or the life pod or the escape pod i'll go down with the ship right that's a lot to call on somebody to do and it takes a lot of practice and in order to get it it has to be put in your head by everybody in your family, your mama, your aunts, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your uncles, your daddy, or boyfriend, stepdaddy, whatever it may be. You got to be a man. You got to start telling these infants when they're still in the crib, even though they can't understand what you're saying. Boy, you have to act like a man. That's a man thing. Men don't do this. Men don't do that. Men do this. Men do that. And you keep repeating it until the guy is ready to die. So you reinforce this difficult and onerous task of being ready for self-sacrifice. Now, if you didn't get that growing up, you can supercharge the process of cramming it into your own soul. So do so if you didn't get it growing up. It's a man's obligation to protect and provide. Don't care whether the helper is a Ill, ungrateful, ugly ass, whatever. <laughs> if she's a woman, you owe it to her just because she is, even if she doesn't like the idea. Now, <clears throat> the other point is, 
Hey, here's something good about the rap videos. Uh oh. Get you a fine one. <laughs> if you got to listen to Greek, might as well be fine. You can support him walking in with you. Yeah, man, look what I got. <laughs> See, man, look here. Hey, oh, I know you looking. She looking good. Don't get mad because everybody looking. Stick your chest out. Yeah, man, I know y'all looking because you want it, man, but it's mine. I got some last night, man. Go get some tonight, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, BJ, man, I don't mind. It's all right. It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, if, if you do that, it makes it worthwhile. You walk in with one of these, if, if, you know, like, uh, can we go around the other street? Too many of my homeboys, they out here right now looking at this high noon on Main Street. I don't want them to see your ass. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I'm sorry. And see, uh, it's like that. The pretty women have all kinds of complexes because they actually got something going on. So they'll sit there and they'll look at themselves in the mirror, you know, and get the cell phone out, do it all, you know. And so, you know, you flip it around so you can see what's. Uh huh. Baby, do you think I got my makeup on? Do you think I need a little more? Or did I put too much on? See, they really have something to work with. So these fine points, you know, they have a significance. And they want you to tell them they look good. So you look at this woman like, damn, baby, you look like a movie star. And you asking me whether you can look, oh, shoot. See, and that's better than some handkerchief head going on. Yeah, you know you be liking what I gotta go. No, damn. See, I remember one time I was sitting out in front of a restaurant, moderate level. Homeboy was out there with me. We supposed to meet another woman. She wanted to talk to us about some business. So I was looking to see, you know, if she had responded to the latest inquiry because she was late. And I heard somebody say, oh, Judge Brown. Yes. I just love me some Judge Joe Brown. Thank you, baby. And I looked up. First mm -hmm. thing I saw was these big feet <laughs> and these funny looking sandals wrapped up above her ankles. And they were leopard pattern. And her heels were wider than the shoes. And they were rusty. And the nail polish was chipped and it looked uh -huh. gaudy. I looked up and I saw these ham hocks. <laughs> and then a white mini skirt that was three times wider than it was tall. Dang. It was white with zebra stripes on it. Oh, man. And this big wide belt that was folded over from the cupcake effect. And it had leopard spots on it, and then some iridescent blue and green top with sharks cruising around on it. Mm. Two gold teeth, one on each side, evenly spaced, and a head rag that was jaguar pattern, and braids hung down below her ass. It kind of smelled because the tips was hanging in the toilet when she took a shit bath. Oh, man. Oh, damn. <laughs> she didn't wash that shit off. Could I get a hug, baby? I'm always nice. I say, yeah, baby, come on. You get you a hug. Oh, daddy, I love me some Judge Joe Brown. I said, oh, God, damn. I'm really <laughs> thinking about a little ego thing. Yeah, your karma is getting greatly enhanced. You know, you don't have to be nice about this. But damn, come on now. What is it? Right. Oh, and sisters, we love you to death, but you're not going to live very long if you're 150 pounds overweight. And I don't care whether you like Lizzo's fat, ugly, hippo ass or not. That's not for you. Get it off of you so you live long enough to see your children off into a good relationship. 
It yeah. ain't him. Mm. And brothers, one thing I don't like, yo, man, what you talking about, Judge, man? Like, we ain't making love money, man. My old lady make 120K a year, man. I bring in 35K. We doing well. <laughs> then, bro, please. Yo, broke ass is on the poverty level. You getting simped off and you gigoloing off your woman. That ain't cool. Well, man, yeah, I don't want to hit. Time out, man. You know, I came out of South Central LA. The seven homeboys I had in elementary and junior high school are all dead now. I'm the only one that got out. And the reason I got out, outside of three of them, just overworked and died of a heart attack, was uh, there's some things you do and some things you don't do. So if you don't know how to do it, spend the time to learn how to do it. It'll come. Might be a little late getting there, but when it gets there, it'll be much more substantial and firmly rooted into the groundwork of success. Don't be trying to play. You try to play it and give it the easy way, it turns out the hard way. Because what they call work, hard work, has been going on for a couple of hundred thousand years at least. And that works because the planet ain't a fair place. What you have, young brother, in the dark sweatshirt for lunch? What I have for lunch? I had a... Uh like a, a bowl with like uh chicken vegetables all mixed into it brother what'd you have man i worked last night so i uh i had some fruit not even eat yet i just had some fruit woke you up and eat meat? i don't eat meat i've eaten meat in seven years okay all right well brother the bowl you had with your chicken in there do you think it was fair to the goddamn Cluck, cluck, that his ass <laughs> oh, to eat it, man. Hell no. Nope, nope. The world ain't fair. That's a conceit. That's a fact. So when the world ain't fair, don't expect it to be fair. That's right. Lesson in life. Hip hop's okay, but move it on. It's stagnated. It's 40 some years old. Move it. Don't get caught up in a certain group that wants to make a lot of money selling it in Japan where they're still using techno is the dance mode. Berlin, Moscow, Rome, uh, Singapore. Mm -hmm. What do you get? Rio de Janeiro, Mexico City where they're using the same damn thing over and over again and they're destroying and stultifying your art so that they can make money that you don't get. And when you sign a contract, word up, what you want is a percentage of the unadjusted gross from the first dollar percentage of unadjusted gross from the first dollar that's eight words that's what you want and you also want a percentage the same of the distribution anything a percentage of the unadjusted gross from the first dollar. There you go. And when you do that, you won't walk out of here broke but well known. And by the way, what you see in terms of what people supposedly make is Hollywood Madison Avenue exaggeration to make you look better. Big home might be rented by the studio. The artist doesn't own it. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. he does, a lot of times he doesn't. See, and you have to be willing to walk away. Say, fuck you, I'm out of here. And I'll come back with a better offer. 
Now, I did my show for 15 years. If you read Wikipedia, it will tell you I was the highest paid man in Hollywood, white or black. Doesn't really make any difference now because the ex-wife got a whole bunch of that. <laughs> she was fine. God damn it, she was fine. <laughs> but fuck it. It is what it is. I'm getting that rocking chair. I'm going to own one of them rock. Granddad, what you giggling about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was good, yeah. <laughs> when you grow up and know I tell you about it. <laughs> but anyway, have fun. And here's the other little dirty, nasty secret. Life is not long. And see, I didn't understand what old folks were trying to tell me way back when. And nowadays I try to make sure young folk understand it. Yes, sir. When you get old and you look back on it, you know what your main reaction is? God damn, that didn't take that much time at all to get from point A to point B right now. Damn, why did it go so fast? Yeah. So make sure you plan accordingly. You don't have a lot of time because when that lot of time goes past, you realize how short it was. Mm. With that said, gavel drop. Wisdom from Judge Joe Brown. Hey, the oh, that motherfucking Michael. Goddamn right. <laughs> We appreciate you, Judge. Thank yeah. you for your time and your wisdom, brother. Always, always a pleasure, man. Thank you. I got one right here. Gavel drop. Yes, yeah, uh, the legend, the legend in the building. Yeah, I'm out of here. Yes, sir. Appreciate Gotta it, go. This has been Judge Joe. Call me when you can. I'm the one that ran. Mama, yo, daddy, yo. This is Joe Joe on your radio or other device. Come <laughs> check it out. I'm not nice, but as long as I'm walking about to land the situation well in hand, get my. The situation is under control because that's what I do before I get too old. Uh, if you look at me closely, you'll see there's space between the bottom of my feet and the planet Earth because I don't walk. I don't go along the land. I float. I fly. As long as I'm around, as long as I'm floating through the sky, it'll be all right. You don't even have to try. Just put your right. favorite body part on top of your technology and it'll be okay because it's going the right way. Yeah. Your fondest dreams, hopes, and imaginings have become manifest in the flesh. I come as promised and prophesied. This is Joe B getting ready to go on through. So you do what you have to do to be what you need to be judge joe brown the hip-hop and sensitive podcast og style salute Appreciate